This week on LIC Presents Journey in the Life of an Indian, we profile two individuals who fought their circumstances to emerge victorious. She was the first Indian woman to make her HIV positive status public in 1995. Over the years, Kausalya Peria Sami has worked relentlessly to fight for dignity and rights of other HIV positive women. Brought up in a slum in Chennai, Sarath Babu is an entrepreneur with a conscience and a successful business. I asked him, what happened? He said that he was in lose motion, so he didn't come to the hospital. He came from the hospital and came to the other day, he died. In 2003, पहले से बहुत बीमार थी, बहुत बीख थी कि भगवान से ये दुआ बना, या उठा ले, या फिर बीमारी के बारे बताए कहाँ क्या बीमारी है जो डॉक्टर भी नहीं खोज पा रहे मेरी बीमारी। चेहरा इसलिए नहीं दिखाना चाहती कोई ये कहेगा ये तो इन बस में या कहीं रास्ते में दिख जाऊँ तो ये तो वही लेडीज़ जिसको एचआई भी है। Thousands of women infected with HIV in India are ostracized by their family and community. They are abandoned with no one to call their own. Fighting the stigma attached to the disease is Kausalya Periyasami, the first woman in India who took the daring step to reveal her HIV positive status. I did not want to hide my face. Uh, I didn't done anything wrong with it. Why I should hide my face? Widowed at just 19, when her husband succumbed to the dreaded disease, Kausalya faced extreme stigma and isolation. Instead of breaking her, the experience only made her stronger. I got angry with him, but what to do? I cannot do anything about that angry. Uh, I have to use it that angry for good purpose. So uh, I had a angry, and that angry was actually for every day I think about, and uh, he was done for me for this virus. Whenever now also whenever I'm uh, having something in the a pain so then I'll think about it because of this virus only I have to face the problem and other people. Determined to help other women like her live with dignity, she set up Positive Women Network in 1998. A pan-India network of HIV positive women that provides support and spreads awareness on HIV and AIDS. HIV means only the death because there is no medicines in that time, there is no treatment in that time. So there is, uh, if there is HIV, then immediately death will, uh, death will be. That kind of information only we got it in when we are in the uh, formed in that positive women network in that time. So we thought we only meet with others and support each other. So that's the purpose we actually uh, got together. Positive Women Network reaches out to women living with HIV and trains them in effective ways to fight the disease. Once trained, these women further the cause by working as counsellors with hospitals. Once we met with the hospital and things like that, we educate them, we have a staff and uh, they will educate them uh, uh, about the HIV information, how with the HIV, how they can live a healthy life. And then they will educate them about there are so many social welfare schemes are available, so they can avail those social welfare schemes. 
Over the years, Kosalya has worked closely with the policy makers and expanded her network to collaborate with national and international agencies to improve the accessibility of the healthcare services at the grassroots level. For HIV positive women, are getting ARV is not enough. So even if there is any problem for a prevention of other infections like cervical cancer, uh, related to reproductive health, many infections to prevent themselves, there is no services much available. So we are making them to government to know this. Uh, we are collecting some of the information and uh, to dialoguing with them to make some of the health uh, related changes. The affected people belong to this category in terms of how they are affected. And Kaushalya has stood out as a champion to work for these people. She, in the first step, organized the affected people. Later on, specialized in working for the affected women. She has been on behalf of the affected people fighting for introduction of the legislation in parliament. Now that legislation has been moved in the parliament. At this vocational center in Ajmer, the network provides financial empowerment to people by teaching vocational skills like making paper and incense sticks. We have reached 1,000 people. So now we have called the people who have called the meetings or to give training. So we have known our address to our address that we are calling the PWN Plus. So they give them easy to get out of the people. It is not so much before. It is not so much before. Helping Kosalya find the strength to fight on is her friend and confidant Geeta Venugopal. Geeta has stood like a rock in Kosalya's life, even helping her break the language barrier. Whenever Kosalya was in a group and uh, speaking to people, she usually, you know, burst into this uh, like uh, talk about herself, asking questions and everything. And if I was in the crowd somewhere, she'll break only into, she wouldn't even try to speak in any other language. She, she knows that uh, I'm in the crowd and thereby I need to translate it for her. So this became a practice and so finally one day I said, no, I can't do this anymore. Yeah? If I translate it for you, then you are not going to speak it with nothing and the translation kills the uh, spirit with which she conveyed stuff. So then I said, no, this can't go on like this. So you will have to pick up our language. You will have to listen to whatever. So she started speaking. And if she, if she uh, can't in another language, then I'll support her sometime. But other than that, I made sure that she is the one who's speaking and no. So I'll close my eyes sometime in the meetings so that she doesn't look at me. Like every HIV patient, Kosalya's health too is reliant on medication and proper nutrition. She has a bowl of fresh fruits daily and sometimes, when time permits, she also goes out on a stroll. Sometime in the, uh, the health is dependent upon the medicines, but not all the time medicines will help for us, for our health also. Uh, our hope and, uh, and then our positivity uh, in, inside only will help us, uh, even our health to be in our side. Inspired by Kosalya's hope and positivity, one of her beneficiaries, Dimple, is striving hard to bring about a change. And she is ready to face the world without concealing her identity. जब तक हम अपने चेहरे को दिखा के और अपना आगे 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 बात नहीं करेंगे। In a span of 16 years, 
Kausalya has supported over 30,000 women across 13 Indian states, giving them the courage to live with HIV and making them self-reliant by breaking all social barriers, scripting a positive story. On the other side of the break, catch the story of Sarat Babu, Chennai's very own slum dog, who is now the food king. Life is one, you know. We should explore our uh, fullest potential within this life and uh, try to help ourselves, our family, as well as the society. A staple in the city of Chennai, fluffy and steamed, served with accompaniments. Idlis bring back many memories for Sarat Babu. Of growing up in the slum of Madipakam, the family income was just one rupee a day when my mother was working in this Balwadi. So that income was not enough for uh, five kids and my mother. So what she did is she started a small Ivli shop. So, uh, and what, what we used to do is me and my uh, younger sister, uh, you know, she will put it in a box and uh, we pick up that lease and we have a small cash box and she sent both of us. Like one will be like collecting the cash and another will be delivering the lease. In, the, in our streets, in our slum. Life was never a bed of roses for Sarat and his siblings. While they dreamt big and studied hard, their mother worked even harder, juggling four jobs. She always wanted us to be, you know, aloof from the crowd, focus on studies, focus on future and also not to get disturbed by the neighborhood happenings where they get good food. But you know, you don't have good food and all. So which I felt, you know, like, okay, I have to be really focused in my studies. And always when, when I see my mother work four jobs in a day, I thought, uh, you know, the best thing I could give back to her is the number of stars in my rank card. The stars in his report cards lit his way to Bits Pilani and IIM Ahmedabad. And his mother didn't let lack of resources be an impediment. I got the you know admission for chemical engineering over there and my mom said that somehow I'll make you study. So that's how like she pawned my sister's jewels as well as she took some high interest debt and also she said even we will send, sell this this you know, piece of land also, I'll make, make sure that you study over there. I chose Naim Ahmedabad and went there and pursued my management education because my background, uh, there is no way I could learn about marketing or strategy or, you know, any aspects of management. And I don't come from a business family apart from my mother having a small, you know, idli shop. So I wanted to learn before getting into the business to, you know, to have a big thing which I wanted to do. So I want to learn what, is, what are the aspects of management. So that's how I went to IIM Ahmedabad with the sole focus that I have to start a company. With poverty as a teacher and his mother's sacrifices as motivation, this bright student worked hard to set up his own company. One thing which changed in my lifetime, in my, you know, in my lifetime I would say, seeing my mother drink water at the end of the day. When I was in my 7th standard, I happened to see her drink water. So that changed the entire perspective of life. How can one life on this earth, you know, uh, sacrifice her food for the well-being of the other? And I know how much food is important. So how much it pains when there is no food. So I, when I realized that my mother is suffering much more, having done so much work, and not for her, for us, I thought, oh my God, she's something, you know, really out of the world. She's really good. And I have to really work hard, study hard for her betterment, you know, for her future, like to support her. 
These influences gave birth to a different kind of entrepreneur in him. They saw the making of food king. A business he knew a little too well. With just 2000 rupees, Sarat Babu started Food King Catering Services in Ahmedabad in 2006. And now, with a presence in four locations, Food King has a turnover of around 10 crore rupees. See, when I was in my final year, in, uh, in, uh, year of engineering, I thought I should start a company and give jobs to many people. The one single learning which I got from my mother is, for others people benefit, we could sacrifice. So she sacrificed her food for our benefits and I thought if I am just going to be benefited by her sacrifice, it's selfishness. So I thought her sacrifice should go and reach many more people. So that's how I thought I should start a company and employ people. If we employ one person and he could take care of at least four to five people, just like my mother took care of five of us, I thought job is very important. You know, once you give them a job, they will take care of themselves. So that's how, you know, the concept of Food King was there. And also I know for sure in uh, you know, colleges and corporates, not many you know, like, uh, uh, good food with uh, the cheaper rates is not available. You know, we need, uh, you know, like everything is very costly. One such Food King employee has found a new lease of life. Manoj dropped out of school after failing a subject. His search for a job yielded no results due to his lack of education. That was until Sarat Babu decided to employ and mentor him. Basically, he's my role model and my inspiration. I can personally connect him because the reason is, in my childhood, my mom, mom also used to sell, uh, sell weeklies. So, that's I can know uh, more about connect with him and uh, if he can achieve from that situation to this height and I can also you know follow his uh, uh, footsteps. He never follow money. He follows patience. You know when we follow money we can't give our best and when situations come uh, so we get low and those things and all will happen. When we follow our patience. So we give all our best and you know it it's gives a purpose you know to work uh, to you know help others. 25 years back I was a guy who was selling Italy from my mother's shop in the streets of Madipaka. Sarath is regularly seen at school and college gatherings sharing his experiences. I can't even think that today I would have run a company which is employing a few hundreds of people. As he knows all too well how lack of resources and guidance affects the youth in making the right choices. I thought uh, if I share my background to them, they should get learn and think that there is, it is possible. It is not that uh, money is everything, you know, like without money we could do things, you know, we could also achieve things. So that kind of hope I want to give to all these uh, kids. So I go, go in their assembly, address them and I, and I share my story, I share about what is bits, what is I am and I share about like what is lawyer, what is doctor and I tell them you should also dream it. I have done it, you should also do it. And also I tell them for studies, education, if you need any help, I share my number and tell them you contact me. Along with hope, Sarath has a dream, that of a hunger-free nation. His charity, Hunger Free Foundation, helps orphanages like these take care of children. He financially supports such institutions all over the country, giving them a chance to dream. We, I declared one day, uh, October 10th, 10 10th, as the hunger free day across the country. And what we do, we go to all these orphanages and old age or old age homes and we try to feed them and also we try to do take a career uh, session for them, telling that these are the options available and you should pursue one of them, you know, and these are the colleges available. So you could do there, these are the best colleges, these are the, you know, medium, these are local colleges like that. You know, all the people should dream big. 
you know, um, life is one, you know. We should explore our uh, fullest potential within this life and uh, try to help ourselves, our family as well as the society. We all uh, get educated, you know, when we get educated, we think ourselves that we should get a job, we should settle our life, but we should get educated for our country. When we think about our country, it includes us, our family and many more families too. He dreamt big and his achievements are even bigger. Thanks to his inspiration, his mother, Sarat Babu escaped his circumstances only to lend a helping hand to others.